All right, uh, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna look at some of the ways that you can take models from Revit into Rhino and, and mainly how you can select the information you want. Depending on what you wanna do in, in Rhino, it, you know, it becomes important to only take the stuff out of Revit that you really are interested in. And so a lot of people start with categories and that's actually I don't I'm not really sure that's the best way to do it um, now that we have a little bit more some more tools in Rhino inside Revit. So let's take a look at at the first way which to me has become one of the best ways to do it is by view. And so what I've done here in, in Revit is I've created a I've duplicated the 3D view and renamed it. And then what I'll do is, what's nice about views is they save the categories that are visible and not visible, of course. And those are the same categories we'll use to import from Rhino. And so you can go to Rhino here, or to Rhino, which is just a view I, I created, um, go into your graphic overrides, and then we can go through here and you can check off the things that you don't want to come over. For instance, like this entourage, I don't need that in, in Rhino. And if I apply that or say, okay, um, you'll see that that information goes away and it will, will update. So you can go through here and you can take out all the things that you don't want to come across. Um, like we could do, um, well, parking, we can decide whether we want that or not. Um, so there's site, um, depending on if that's what we want. There's topography. Um, well, let's let's leave the topography on for right now. And so we'll go through and do all that. Okay. So that leaves us with a little bit of um, what's this right here? These are ah, planting. So let's get planting out of there too. Perfect. Okay. So now we have, have less on there. All right. So now what we're going to do is we'll, we'll, we'll open uh, Rhino and uh, Grasshopper. This is actually already open, so it's already pulling it across, but let me look, let me show you the, the information. So what I've done here is I've taken, I've queried views, right? So if we go to our, our Rhino um, pull down or Rhino and we can go into views and um, we can query all the views in the in the model that's what we're doing here and and then i just use a, a name so a two rhinos the name of the view and then what the, I, that gives me the view i throw that through a filter so our filters are right here and we have a filter by uh a view a visible in view filter um, we run that through a query elements which is under elements we can query for elements right here and then once we get the elements, we can take the elements here and we can um, turn them into geometry. Uh, one of the important things that I've done here is because I want to use the, I'm going to use the categories to create layers in, in Rhino. Uh, you do need to go in here and zoom in on the object and you can see by default, this will have no category like this. This is what it looks like coming out of the, the so you just come down here to the plus symbol and hit plus and it will create a category. Um, now you get both the categories and the geometries for everything and you'll need that. Um, if you want to read the category name and use the na na category name for a layer. Uh, so we get the category name, we get the geometry itself. I created a Python script which will be available um, in the guide and, and down below on the, on the video. And this just simply takes a flattened list of geometry, a flattened list of layers, and then with a uh, plus button here or with a, a true value button here, uh, then it will actually bake this into to Rhino on separate layers and it'll create the layers if they don't exist. So the different options we're going to see today is the, this last piece is always the same for all these definitions that are going to come up here. Um, so I won't concentrate on those. I'll continue to concentrate on the front end here. Um, but the first one I wanted to start with, which was views, uh, is, is really a really effective way to have a view that always is saved. You know, it never gets, you don't really work in it. 
um, and it's really used just to import geometry. All right, so let's look at the next one here. I will save that, and we'll come over here to um, let's see what we can open here. So let's do categories. So do categories here. Now categories are a good way to control certain things, but you need a good list of categories and that that can be a little overwhelming. This is just a short list. So if you're just taking some of the model across, categories isn't a bad way. So I've just listed here um, different categories names. And then what we do is we'll go through and we'll query for the categories themselves. Um, and, and so you can go into uh, query category and it will query uh, the different categories. This will also bring subcategories if you want it to. Uh, and then, and you can also type in subcategories here with a slash uh, in, in the name. And so this, you'll get your list of categories and subcategories here. You run this through a category filter, which is under uh, filter. And then you get your elements and then you're off to the rest of the definition. Like I said, that was the same before. Um, and so this is a way to, to uh, go for, for categories. So this, this can get, a, like I said, sometimes when you're bringing most of the model across or a lot of the model across, this can be pretty overwhelming, the list of categories that you need and don't need. Um, and it can be a little hard if you have lots of people trying to, to edit it. Um, so, so be a little careful with this one using categories, but you can do it. Another thing that I've noticed is sometimes there's a limit on, on the filter for elements. We have a kind of an artificial limit here that you can set higher and higher. And that's just to make sure that you don't actually grab from a model more than, more than it can handle. But um, when you're in a certain model and you know it works well, right, you wanna remove the limit, you can actually just hit minus here. And what that will do is it will remove the limit and now there's no limit on that component to query for elements. Okay, so that's using category. Uh, and, and if you're taking one, two, four, 10 categories over, you're probably okay. Uh, but you get more than that. I think that views probably work a little bit better. All right, so that's the second way of doing it with categories. The third way is just to select objects. Um, and I actually use this most often when uh, you just want to grab something really quick or you want to, um, you're testing, you know, you're just testing different objects. Um, so let's see here, that would be this one right here. Okay, so this one's very simple uh, and, 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 but it's the last one because that's the one I actually use the least. But uh, what you do is you come over here and you get graphic element right here. Um, there's graphic element. Okay. And then you just, you just, uh, you just do an element geometry directly from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to say select multiple elements. And I can, if it was working, that, then I could go, let me just try this here. So I can go in and you can select different elements in, in Revit. And then that will just uh, go down the, the, the process here of going into um, Revit. So this is a quick way of, of, of selecting objects. And um, that's a good way to just do something really, really quick if you wanna get some stuff over from Revit into Rhino. Hope that video is helpful. We'll go from there, thanks, bye.